Hey, everybody. Uh, Dave Consiglio here with Powerless Yet Unstoppable. Got a special guest here, uh, plays wide receiver, running back, a little bit of everything for us here at Missouri State. Super excited to have him. But as usual, before we do that, let's open it up in a word of prayer and let God take over. Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you for this day. I thank you, praise you for this time to spend and uh, talk about you. I thank you, praise you for our special guest, Lord. We just ask that you lead the conversation, tug at our hearts, and uh, allow us to speak truth about you. We thank you and praise you, uh, especially for this Easter week and this weekend and all that it means and the details and the sacrifice that you've made on our behalf. We just pray for the audience, those that are listening, Lord, bless their attitudes, their hearts. Allow this to be uplifting and encouraging and motivating for them this special Easter week. We love you. We praise you. We're nothing without you. Everything with you. In Jesus' precious and powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, here we go. Uh, special guest, like I said, plays wide receiver slash running back. He'll tell you he plays a little bit of quarterback too. But uh, that that's that's only if we call a halfback pass once in a blue moon. Oh, yeah. But, uh, we got Kevon Latulis, uh, again, Missouri State Bear football player here. Uh, go ahead, take it away, man. What's on your heart? Welcome to the show. Thank you all for having me. It's a blessing to be here, and it's a blessing to be alive today, man. Um, man. I'm just I'm just grateful for the opportunity that God gave me, honestly, to be here in Missouri. Honestly, I didn't know where Missouri was on the map at first, but now that I'm here, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad that. <laughs> I'm glad that God put like good people in my life, like Coach Coach C and all my other coaches and the staff here to like help me become the man I want to be. Absolutely. Yes, so, uh, if I can dive right into it a little bit, who, who, when you were younger, kind of helped instill the strong faith in you? Um, who, who's someone you looked up to as a young kid, and uh, maybe what's what's some things that they did specifically for you? to just kind of shape you and your faith and, and, and where your heart's at right now? Um, my mama, honestly, she was the she was the first lady to teach me a lot about God. She um, she kept me in the church a lot when I was little. I was an usher. She had me in the choir and all. Even, a, you know, the Sundays, is you don't want to go, but you, mama make you, you know, that was me, man, every Sunday. I was there earlier before the pastor for Sunday school and all, setting up the church. So she, she instilled that in me early. And um, I'm real grateful she did because it, it played a big role in part of my life today. Absolutely. So the the backside of that is um, me as a parent, right? I got three uh, three young kids. Yes, uh, I guess I want to learn kind of from you in in your situation. What's something or what what's something that your mom did for you that really kind of again aside from even taking you to church all the time, but for me and my family. What's uh, what's one thing that I should really try to do on a consistent basis with my kids, with my wife, just to, to make sure that we're instilling that faith in, in my own kids? Uh, again, trying to learn from you and, and how you were raised. Yes, sir. Um, really, all she the most important thing for me was she just she taught me that God is God is like our father, you know, we can talk to him anytime. It doesn't have to be the perfect prayer and nothing like that. We can just talk to him like we having a regular conversation, you know. So she made it. She made it simple for me like that, and she was really just like just talk, start talking to Jesus, you know. Like that was pretty much the gist of it. She just told me that like I gotta have my own personal relationship. She can't make me, you know. She can't make me like talk to him all the time. I got to want to talk to him, you know. I got to want to have him in my life. So she made that she made that clear for me too. Absolutely. So is there, uh, you know, we talk, and I've been there too, you know, when you're younger, mom kind of drags you to church and there's days you want to sleep in and be lazy. Uh, was there was there a moment that where it kind of clicked for you where it was like, man, this is more than just being forced to go to church. Um, it's bigger than that. And uh, kind of to piggyback, like you talked about, uh, that relationship. Um, is there Was there a specific moment or a time where it was like church is more than just being forced to go to, but you actually enjoyed it? Yes, sir. Um, I, started, I started really enjoying going to church. Like the moment it hit me was um, my senior year. I, did, I wasn't 
I wasn't getting any uh any offers that, or looks the way I wanted to, but my mama told me just keep just keep trusting in God. You can't trust in man. You got to trust in God. You know, cause God God is like in control of everything. So I just I just kept praying and asking God, and He blessed me with a scholarship from my um from my JUCO that I had went to. Absolutely. And I was like, yes, sir. And then at that moment, I was like. I was like, all I gotta do is just trust in the man upstairs, and he gonna take care of everything else. As long as I'm doing right on my end, you know, it can't, it can't just be all him. It gotta be 50-50. You know, you gotta wanna, you gotta wanna be doing right too as well. So, absolutely, a conscious decision to uh, to do it right. Yes, Why don't uh, can you give us a little background on uh, on on your life, uh, just kind of growing up, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, family. And, uh, you know, kind of your path to Missouri State. And as you said, you didn't know Missouri even existed or where it was. <laughs> but uh, I think we're both uh, we're both grateful and blessed to be here. Uh, you know, we talk about it off off camera here, but I love you to death, man. But, yeah, tell tell the off, uh, tell the audience here a little bit about your story and how you ended up here. Well, I'm from I'm from a little town in southeast Texas. Port Arthur, Texas, but I uh, attended Needleland High School. It's another little town, but it's not too far from each other. The only thing that separates the two towns is a highway, really. So you cross that street, you in the other city. <laughs> so um, I um, I ended up getting a scholarship my senior year uh, to JUCO, uh, Kilgore, Kilgore Junior College in East Texas. And I played my two years there. I got my AA degree in kinesiology and God blessed me to have a good season my uh my second year there. And a coach from the uh from the old staff before Coach P actually found me and uh recruited me. And then um I didn't even honestly I didn't know who uh Coach P was at first. And then um when I got there they had told me that he was uh he was a great coach and he was um a real good guy. So I was just I was just excited to be like D1, you know, because that's all I knew about football at the time. Like, I was just going to be D1. But I, when I got here, I realized that it was more than that. We building, we building a culture and we starting up something new and great here in Missouri State. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. Amen. We are yes, both uh, blessed beyond belief. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, what, uh, what was the biggest challenge, I guess, even uh, maybe from high school to JUCO to – to hear, but what are some of the major challenges that kind of brought you here? And and if you look back on the past, you know what what uh, what are some of the lessons that you learned your time from high school to JUCO um, to now? Mm, you either gotta you either gotta humble yourself, or God's gonna find a way to humble you. You know, that's uh -huh. a big that's a big thing. You gotta you gotta know your place. You gotta know. You gotta know that without God, there's nothing. You know what I mean, honestly, because everything good comes through Him. But if you, if you, if you think you get it, if you think you're more than Him, then He's gonna find a way to humble you. You know, so that's just that's pretty much my lesson for real. Absolutely, man, I love yes, it. Sir. That uh, that goes right with uh, the Bible verse on the podcast. You know, uh, James 4.10 says exactly that. Humble yourself before the Lord and he'll lift you up. Um, that's one thing I've always uh, kind of admired about you, man. Just your humility about everything. I mean, you're you're blessed beyond belief. You know, uh, I, it doesn't take long for someone to figure out what your God-given gifts are. And uh, but but you're humble about it. You're uh, you're quiet spoken, uh, upspoken when you need to be. But your actions speak louder than words, and and I just love the soft-spoken voice of Kevon. But then you see him out on the field, and it's a whole different thing, man. <laughs> and uh, so credit yeah. to you, like I said, it's it's a uh, credit to you to be able to live that out humbly each and every day, and just uh, bring your lunch pail, put God first, and and go to work. Yes, um, along those lines, what would uh, is there any advice that you would give? a young Kevon Latulis. So having gone through what you did, um, been the places that you've been, what's some, what are some lifelong lessons you've learned that if you could rewind the clock, 
you'd tell uh, a young Kevon Latulis? I tell him, just trust the process, man. It might seem hard. You might have days that you down, like real down, and you don't feel like you don't know how to talk to somebody or know how to get the stuff that you're feeling off your chest. But you can talk to somebody. You can talk to God. You really can. And just you got to just have faith. You got to keep trusting, trusting in the process. Honestly, anything you want, anything worth having is is not gonna come easy, you know. So you got to be ready. You got to be ready to go through it if you really want it, you know. If you really love it and you really dedicated to it, the work, the work, and God is gonna take care of it. You just got to make sure you doing the right thing. You on the right track. And not, and not everything that calls your name, you need to go see about it, you know? Sometimes you just need to stay in your own lane. Just make sure you're doing what you need to do. You don't have to go do what everybody else got to do, you know? Be your, own, be your own person. Be your own man. You got it. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a big thing these days. You know, a lot of social media, people out there chasing other people. Um you know, trying to do what other people are doing. Yes, but in sir. reality, you know, God gave us all specific gifts um, right. and talent. One, to glorify him, not to glorify ourselves, which is where the humility comes. Yes, but again, sir. certainly not to be chasing what other people want, but to use the gifts that he's blessed us with to glorify him on a daily basis. Amen. <clears throat> um, I would... Uh, Along those lines, has there been has there been any instance in college um, or any time throughout your life where you just you felt like your faith was being tested? Um, you know, if you wouldn't mind sharing us uh, with a moment where, you know, again, like you said, you had some struggles, were questioning things, or uh, how 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 have there been moments in your life that uh, where your your faith has been tested, and uh, and how do you respond? Mm. Mm. Honestly, last last spring season, I was I wasn't able to play because of uh, a fault of my own. But that was when God that's when God had me in His hands the most. You know, that's when I really felt like God's presence. He um, I was I wanted to get down, but I'm glad that I have coaches that like really cared about me and loved me. They was like. Coach uh, Fouch, for example, he was like, I know you're down right now, but you got to keep working because it's going to pay off, you know. And you got and you can't you can't let that keep you down. You can't let that keep you down because you got to because it's a blessing and a curse. But I feel like I got to I'm the, God gave me a lot of energy to give other people energy, you know, when they're down and when they're sad. So when I'm down, that I feel like that affects more people than just me. So I can't I can't let my own like self pity or like my own my own personal stuff get to the get to the team because that's just gonna bring the team down. So I I had to like I prayed a lot and God helped me like come out of that little that little rut I was in. And I kept I kept practicing, going to practice like I was still finna play on Saturday on Saturdays, you know. And I went to the games and supported my team and that was that was just like it made my heart happy, you know what I mean, being able to make my teammates better on the daily. So that was a that was a good experience for me. Yeah, that uh, I do commend you, man. That was that was a great job at a special spring season, and uh, you're absolutely right. You know, I think if anybody flipped on the game film or practice film, I should say, you know, they wouldn't have known that you weren't about to play on Saturday. And uh, that's one thing. Again, I just love about you on that football field, man. You catch a you catch an out route or an arrow route for two yards. You're going to run the other 60 and put it in the end zone, you know, whether it's game time, practice, anything like that. And, sure. uh, again, I think it speaks volumes to what you said, uh, and it's going to be the title of this episode, Humble Yourselves or Be Humbled. Mm. And uh, I, I absolutely love that. I think, uh, like you said, too, you know, being ineligible last spring probably opened your eyes and uh, gave you some more time to spend one uh, you know, getting your academics right, but most sure. importantly, you know, in God's word and uh, in prayerful time, um, you know, reading the word and studying. Um, and I think uh, that's, again, credit to you as well to having your mind and your antennas up 
to see it as an opportunity to sharpen your face skills and yes, not sir. have a pity party about yourself. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. What uh it, it was a blessing. Go ahead. go ahead, big dog. Sorry, cut you off. Oh no, it's okay. I was just I was just agreeing with you. Yes, sir. God God always works. God works in mysterious ways, you know. It might seem bad, but as long as you as long as you keep your eye on the sparrow, man, everything gonna work out. You gotta just keep your, your face strong and keep your eyes moving forward. Put one foot in front of the other, you know, and just keep going. You can go at your own you can go at your own pace, but you can't stop going, you know what I mean? You always gotta keep going, you know. Amen. Find like somebody that. you might meet somebody along the way that can help pick you up more, you know. It can help lift you up to a different level, you know. So you got it. I like what you said too. You know, God gave you energy. And uh, you know, if you were to have a pity party over there on the sideline and uh not give it your best in practice, that might affect others around you. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, you and I are uh similar in that aspect. You know, again, I feel like the good Lord gave me some energy, some enthusiasm and juice. And, you know, yeah, I have days, but I gotta catch myself and understand that, you know, again, if I'm not using my gifts to the best of my ability. I'm really slapping him in the face and taking my gifts for granted. Right. Yes, sir. And uh, I really like what you said too, you know, reflecting on the past, but not dwelling on it. Um, my, uh, my devotion for this morning in my FCA coach's Bible uh, says, forget the past is the title and uh, the Bible verses Philippians 3, 13 through 14, which says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And I think uh, I think we lost our two list there, but we'll carry on here. It's all good. Um, I love how that just ties into what he had spoke upon, you know, about the past and um you know, not being stuck on it, learning from it, but also pressing forward and uh, doing our due diligence to keep our eyes straight ahead. As he said, one foot in front of the other and uh, leaving it up to God, trusting God's plan and purpose on a daily basis. Um, the other reason why I wanted to touch on this Bible verse today being Easter weekend. Um, honestly, it kind of caught me by surprise. You know, we went to church this past weekend and, uh, and obviously talked about Easter weekend next weekend and adjusted services for being a big weekend. But that Bible verse really speaks to me being, you know, the Easter week. If you think about the events leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus and the resurrection, um, which is what Easter is all about, you know, how we achieve our salvation through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice um, and the grace extended to us through his death and resurrection. Think about that Bible verse in, in Jesus's context and, and in his life. He wasn't focused this week, particularly leading up to the moment he knew he was going to die, be crucified. He wasn't necessarily thinking about the past miracles, the past trials, the past tribulations, the you know struggles in the desert, the temptations. He was focused. He fixed his eyes on what God had called him to do, which was to carry that cross, take it up and, and really set up his own crucifixion for us. And, and I think that that verse, yeah, it speaks volumes to us as humans to stay focused and keep our eyes on the prize, which is our eternal reward um, in heaven, you know, with God. Hello. But talks about. What's up, Keep I'm on. sorry, my phone had well, overheated and had kicked me off. You're good, man. Well, welcome back. I'm, I'm glad you got back on. Yes, sir. I apologize. You're good. You got a part in my voice. It's kind of crackling in and out. Oh, sorry. I probably should have done some more yelling this morning. <laughs> it's all right. It's it's not yelling. It's passion, you know. So that's right. That's, the way. that's right. Well, hey, just to make you feel better, uh, people think it's because it's from coaching. But it's really because of my kids at home. <laughs> I, joke, I, <laughs> I, joke, I joke around that, uh, you know, they, they got me uh, yelling up a storm at home. So mm -hmm. I don't blame it on you guys. I blame it on them. 
Yeah. Yeah, man. But no, man, we were, I was just talking about uh, Bible verse Philippians 3, 13 through 14, which just talks about how, like you had said, with your setback in the spring, you know, it says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I've not achieved it, but I don't focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, Christ Jesus, is calling us. Amen. And, you know, just to piggyback that with Easter, you know, as I said earlier, you know, think about what Jesus was going through this week and the days and moments leading up to carrying his cross and, and really setting up his own crucifixion uh, for us and, and the miracle and the blessing on the back end of, you know, him being risen from the dead on the third day and uh, conquering death. You know, I think a lot of people think about that verse in the context of, you know, us obviously fulfilling our duties for God and what he created us and called us to do. But I think you get a completely different perspective if you look at it from uh, Jesus's eyes in a sense that he wasn't fixed on the past, but he kept his eyes on the moment, the here and now, fulfilling God's purpose and plan for his life on a daily basis. Sure. And uh, I guess before we get into uh, closing up here with the FCA overtime, um, if you wouldn't mind, Latulis, what uh, what are some ways that you stay strong in your faith, uh, being in college and being away from from your mom, who's uh, who's really been a rock for you as far as your faith goes? Sure. Um, honestly, keeping keeping those connections, you know, back home. Like I don't always I don't always get a chance to talk to my mama on the phone. But she she'll send me like Bible scriptures and stuff like that, you know, just to just to keep me up and keep me going. Her as well as my aunt and um, some of my other coaches from back home from over the years, they'll send me scriptures and stuff too. So a support system, having a strong support system, plays a big role. You know, it's a big key role in your faith as well. You know, and then as well as finding people, finding people around you that you associate with on a daily that also have a strong faith. Fortunately, I was blessed to have my roommates, you know, my roommates, they, they were all raised with strong faith as well. So it's real easy to talk to them about church and how we feel about our faith and stuff like that as well. And then you, you, you up here too with us. I'm glad God like put you in our lives as well, because like a lot of coaches talk faith, but you actually practice and preach your faith the right way. So I, I commend you on that. And I appreciate you for that as well, Coach C, you know. I like I like having conversations with you. Like that's why I show up thirty minutes early just to talk to Coach CC. Was on your mind, you know, man? Because you always you always got something encouraging for me. So I I really appreciate you for that. And then, you know, just keeping keeping people with strong faith around you that that plays a big part as well. I appreciate that, man. It it never fails. I'd be sitting in the office. I hear uh, that door crack open at about five five ten in the morning. And I'm like, it can only be Latulis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, mind you, you work out at uh, eight o'clock, but uh, for some reason, good Lord got you up dark and early and wanted to get that 6 a.m. workout. So yes, um, I appreciate you uh, equally, man. It, it goes both ways. Yes, sir. Yeah. Iron sharpened iron, right, big dog? You know what I'm talking about? Amen. And I'll say it like this, too. Uh, you know, I say it just about every other week on here, but I commend you, your teammates, yes, sir. Uh, coaching staff as well, because uh, you guys, you guys make it easy for me to stand up for my faith. Yes, so sir. the compliment you just gave me, uh, I appreciate it. I love it. I accept it. But you got to understand that the other half of that comes from you guys. Yes, uh, I'll be honest. If uh, you know, when we pray in the weight room. If y'all looked at me sideways, backwards, uh, I don't know if I could be that strong to to stick with it. But the fact that you guys are, are all about it, um, you believe in it, and uh, we genuinely care about each other. Um, like I said, you guys, you guys, uh, you guys are the difference. It's it's not me, but it's us letting the good Lord take over and and mm. uh, do what He needs to do through us. Mm. 
you know, uh, I don't know exactly how the saying goes, but it says when one or, when more than one or two are in like together, then God's there in the presence, you know. So that's how I always think about it. It doesn't take a, it doesn't take everybody, but if you have one or two people that really really have strong faith, then God's always gonna be there, you know, in the midst of everything. Amen. I love it, man. That's that's one thing we pray about. I pray about specifically with this football team. You know, again, when uh, when people see us, they see him. You know, and when people say what's what's different with Missouri State football, it's exactly that. It's uh, it's that faith, right? Sure. And it's uh, it's a trust. It's a belief in in a power and a, in a being much bigger than us and a purpose much bigger than us. Mm-hmm. So, again, man, I, I appreciate you. I thank you. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. You got anything else you want to leave the audience with? And then uh, I'll wrap it up with a few announcements. Um, no, just, just if you're ever feeling down, just put your hand on your heart and feel that heartbeat and know that God gave you your heartbeat and woke you up today for a reason is to spread love and to share the love that's in your heart, you know. So always keep that on your mind whenever y'all going through tough times, you know. Amen. Amen. Well said, brother. I love it. I love you. Yes, sir. Let's, uh, let's talk uh, FCA real quick. The FCA overtime minute for today is uh, every day with Christ. And the crazy, that awesome part, you just said it, Latulis. Every day you feel that heartbeat. It's every day with Christ. He's He's giving you another day, another opportunity to shine for him and uh, glorify his name. Yes, sir. Uh, Bible verse for today. Ephesians 6, 13 says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Uh, It says you are strong, you are bold, and you are ready to continue to carry the cross, carry your cross for God. A couple other things real quick as we break out. Uh, Just want to say a couple thank you, shout outs. Uh, thank, thank you to Heavy Construction Labors, Local 663. Uh, Derek Barnes couldn't be on the show with us today. Had some meetings come up, but uh, thank you to them, their investment in the podcast and us. We uh, thank Pizza Ranch, Brian Tooker, and their investment as well. We thank uh, Victory Mission, Jason Henson, and uh, blessings upon them. Thank you to uh, Missouri Sports Network. Guy Newcomb, and uh, the opportunity to have us on here talking faith every week. Couldn't do it without him. And uh, thank you again, FCA and Cody Pentecost, and uh, just believing in us. And thank you again, most importantly, to our Lord and Savior for providing us with another day and another opportunity to uh, talk truth, talk life. So with that said, if my voice holds out, and uh crackling in and out here we're gonna break it out in a word of prayer and uh thank you again latulis i love you big dog yes sir i love you too man you know it's all love on this side coach G, man amen all right heavenly father we uh thank you praise you again thank you for this day i thank you praise you for this time with uh latulis and uh talking faith i just pray a uh, blessing upon him and his family lord we uh thank you for his mother Thank you for instilling the uh, faith deep within his heart. And uh, thank you and praise you for bringing him into my life. We ask again that you lead this uh, message today, Lord. Bless those that uh, might be out there listening to it. Allow it to bring some uh, peace and comfort throughout their day. And uh, thank you again for this special Easter week. Thank you for the example, the sacrifice, and uh, the selfless life that Jesus led ultimately to be crucified and died for our sins, to carry each and every one of our burdens on his back, uh, to be raised three days later, conquer death, so that those that believe will never see death, taste death, feel death, or fear death by the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you. Pray a special prayer for those out there that uh, might not know you. We ask that you stir their hearts, awaken the Holy Spirit, and allow them to accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lastly, Lord, we pray a special prayer for those in Ukraine. We just pray for safety and protection and allow your love to snuff out the evil that's rising over there. 
We love you. We praise you. Keep us humble and hungry in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' precious, powerful name I pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that was a great one, Coach C. I appreciate you, big dog.